Hi Libra, welcome to your November 2017 astral update. It's Raina here. So Libra, this is a month that is like totally about money for you. Well, not totally, but very good for it. That's for sure. And the party isn't ending in November because you have Jupiter in the second house for the whole year. I mean, for the next 12 months, I should say. So Jupiter went into Scorpio in October. It was in your sign. So that was a nice one two punch the last couple of years here. And you're going to have a lot of energy in that second house. Joining Jupiter, the sun, the sun starts out the month already in that second house and the sun can bring creative potential and just an emphasis on that particular area. You have Mercury in that sector for the first week and Venus enters there on the seventh as Mercury leaves to go into your third house and Venus rules that house under the sign of Taurus in the universal chart. So Venus in its own house, are you kidding me? This is perfect for Libra because you like bright, bright, shiny objects. And this is great for um, luxury items, even not just essentials. So Venus takes up residence in, in that house. Now Jupiter's already there. Venus and Jupiter are known to be attractors to money. So there you go. And there will be a new moon here on the 18th, new beginnings, maybe new income stream for you in some way. But as all that is going on, you have a full moon in the eighth house of other people's money in the sign of Taurus. And this is happening on the fourth of the month. Now, other people's money can be a pretty broad area. It can be loans. It can be inheritances. And it, I think it can even be your dividends. It's money that you don't earn by the sweat of your brow. So because it's a full moon, I have to think that some of you have been dealing perhaps with some kind of an estate and all of this comes to a head comes to you get your closure or even in some cases you find out more about it maybe there was something that was kept hidden from you and that all comes out so as i stated earlier mercury goes into your third house on the seventh and mercury rules that house this is the house of communications and in 2017 a lot of our communications are obviously internet based. So for you, you may be increasing that internet connection. Perhaps you're starting some kind of a business that requires this. Maybe you're just in the research phase of that. Actually, um, because your third house is Sagittarius, you have had Saturn here for the last two and a half years. And um, some of you may have created some foundation along these lines that might be even profitable. So we are talking about online businesses, blogs, vlogs like uh, doing YouTube, and taking advantage of the technology in order to get your message across in whatever way you do. And Librans are very good at communicating and most of you are easy on the eyes as well. So it can be um, very beneficial on that level as well. Did I say it as well enough? Okay. While that is going on, you have Mars in the first house all month long. So this is in your sign, Libra. Now, Librans are typically go along to get along types of people. Someone may think you have a bee in your bonnet 
all month long because Mars is the god of war. It is the ruler of your opposite sign of Aries. So I think this can actually be a very good combination for Libra because you are so diplomatic and you are so willing to, um, what's the word, um, compromise that sometimes it goes, it veers too far into invalidating your own needs. Um, so this may give you more of a backbone and allow you to put your foot down when you need to Libra. And maybe there's somebody in your life that has kind of run roughshod over you. And this is going to be the month where you put them in their place, albeit in a very classy and, um, I was going to say elegant, but that's kind of like being classy sort of a way where you, you're not being rude, but by the same token, you are being very firm. And this is also a great time to exercise, believe it or not, because, um, uh, the first house is, is the body and, uh, and Mars can indicate a lot of physical motion too you may just be more motivated. That's the best time to do things when you really feel this urge to do it rather than trying to push yourself into doing something that you're really resistant to. And it's interesting, speaking of any kind of exercise, because Neptune goes direct on the 22nd. And while Neptune was retrograde in your sixth house, if you had any kind of strange conditions or symptoms uh, regarding your health, you may have kind of um, found a way to to deal with that. You may have kind of been in denial over your health, and now you're getting going. And um, Neptune is, is going to be direct, and this can be very good if you have artistic tendencies, because Neptune deals with... Um, the spiritual realm. And that could be how people, you know, you think of the word inspired in spirit. I think Dr. Dyer was the one who really pointed that out. The other thing about Neptune in the sixth is it can point to careers involving energy healing or alternative practices that don't utilize conventional methods like drugs and things like that. So you may get very interested in that sort of thing, especially if there's an energy transfer, because going back to what I said about Neptune and spirituality, it's really talking about the immaterial. So even herbs, you know, you can consider to be material objects because they're from the world. So anything that you can do like Reiki, becoming a Reiki master, um, Shamanic healing is another form of this. And so on the 21st, the day before Neptune turns direct, we have the sun going into Sagittarius in that third house of communication where Saturn is winding down and where Mercury is. And You may be feeling very extroverted, wanting to just have fun. And this is kind of perfect timing because this is the kickoff of the holiday season, at least in America, because we have a holiday known as Thanksgiving, which is around the third week of November, uh, right when this when the sun is going into Sagittarius. And I often think about the astrological timing of holidays because Thanksgiving is a celebration of abundance in our lives. What we, what we give thanks for, which is a very positive kind of a mentality. We, we focus in, in America with this ritual around food and specific foods for those of us who are purists, although I, I have tofurkey. Uh, myself, but you know, we have like, um, a, a big emphasis on the meal 
but it can broaden out to anything that we feel grateful for. Actually, Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday because of this. And it falls under Sagittarius when the sun is in Sagittarius. So there's that. And then, of course, Christmas. Now, Christmas is actually on on, um, December 25th. So it's going to be under early degree of Capricorn. And um, the way it's devolved into this materialistic thing, we could make a connection with an earth sign and, and that holiday. But in between, forget about the actual Christmas day because that tends to be very mellow. Uh, but the, the celebrating that goes on in, in December is uh, pretty unreal for some people, not for me. But I know that a lot of people do a lot of socializing then. So I think that you're going to be one of those people, Libra, but you're a social butterfly anyway. So this is uh, nothing new for you. But anyway, it looks like a lot of fun. It definitely looks like it's very good for money for you in um, November, Libra. And so... I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. My website is rainamoonastrology.com and have an amazing November. Bye.